Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is brought to you by the Anxiety Slayer First Responder Series for Health Anxiety. Do you find yourself repeatedly worrying that you might have a serious illness? Are you missing out on time with your family or unable to do the things you love because you find yourself frozen in fear that there may be something wrong with you? Does this sound familiar? We understand. We've both experienced health anxiety and we know how awful it feels and how it can take over your mind and cast a shadow of fear over your life. We know that you want to feel better because worrying about your health can rob you of precious time and peace of mind. Over the last nine years, we've uncovered the biggest challenges our listeners face with health anxiety. And in the Anxiety Slayer First Responder series, we respond to these challenges with step-by-step teachings, tools, and techniques to help you stop anxious thoughts about your health. Learn more at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my wonderful friend and co-host, Ananga Sivier. And before we get started today, we want to give a shout out to Leslie for supporting us on Patreon. We really appreciate your support of the Anxiety Slayer podcast. Today, Ananga and I will be responding to a listener question, asking us what helps when anxiety leads to feeling housebound or agoraphobic. Welcome back, Ananga. Hi, Shan. I'll begin by reading the question. Dear Shan and Ananga, thanks so much for your wonderful podcast. I love how you both incorporate holistic healing into each topic discussed. I've been a sufferer of anxiety and panic for two years. I'm a stay-at-home mom and find it very hard to be vulnerable with others. My situation, therefore, leaves me very lonely. My anxiety has now left me agoraphobic, where I'm pretty much housebound. I still am able to go to some local shops and bring my kids to their local programs. But other than that, the thought of going past my invisible borders bring on such anticipatory anxiety and out-of-this-world sensations. I feel hot, cold, lightheaded and feel like I'm going to pass out. My breathing and eyes go all weird, which brings me back running home. I've tried to take the approach of Dr. Claire Weeks, and it has helped, but this agoraphobia is just too much. I've tried therapy, but not successful. I'd really appreciate if you could talk about this topic and give some more information on how to deal with agoraphobia and get my life back. I know it's all linked to fear, but it's very difficult to overcome. I feel like I've tried multiple modalities and without enough success. Acupuncture, naturopathic doctors, homeopathy. I just want to be me again. Thanks. Oh my goodness. I feel for her so much. I'm glad we're going to be talking about this today. Yeah, it's a very difficult situation because this is where anxiety really leaches into all corners of your life, all corners of your existence. And every time you need to do a simple thing that we might take for granted. You might be invited somewhere or need to attend an event somewhere, an appointment somewhere, then you have this big hurdle to face and it can loom over you for as long as you know that event's coming up. It's very, very challenging, but there are things you can do and we hope that this podcast will offer some hope. If you're feeling agoraphobic, the the first thing that you can do is begin by asking yourself questions and gather some information. We know that a fear of leaving home due to anxiety is a very individual experience. So asking questions and finding out what exactly you feel anxious about is really the best place to start. For example, do you feel unsafe when you're away from home? Do you fear being ill or having an anxiety attack? Or does it feel overwhelming to you to be away from your safe place? Uh, Our listener mentioned anticipatory anxiety about moving past invisible borders, which comes up with a lot of people who are suffering with agoraphobia. So we recommend writing down what that anxiety is about. What are you anticipating happening that provokes anxiety and sends you back home? Yeah, beginning by getting specific is an important first step in knowing where to go next because it is really a very individual experience. Any anxiety that comes in close to feeling like a phobia needs really analyzing and picking apart. There will be different aspects to it. For example, for somebody who's 
afraid of flying. Some people don't like being off the ground. They feel ungrounded. Some people don't like being stuck in what feels a confined space for a long period of time that they can't get out of. Some people are scared of the plane crashing. They're all very different fears and they all need handling in different ways. Some people don't like the social aspect of being stuck in the sky with people they don't know. All kinds of uh, different fears that need to be addressed individually. And first of all, you need to know what they are. What is it that's provoking anxiety about leaving your home? Really asking those questions and getting specific and then taking it from there. This makes me think of uh, just a, a quick example. Last summer, my daughter and I were uh, going to the Detroit area for a concert. And I grew up just outside of Detroit, but I hadn't been back there in many, many years. And where I live now is about, you know, about a five-hour drive away. Anyway, we were going to a concert, one of her very favorite entertainers. She was so excited. We had a hotel downtown. We had the, the concert tickets uh, and everything w- was set to go. But before we got on the road, I started feeling really, really uncomfortable. My anxiety was heightened. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to drive. I was concerned about the area. It had been so long since I'd been there. And when I lived there, that particular area of of Detroit was not a very safe place to be, which I had been told has changed a great deal. And and to my surprise, when we got down there, it it really was a completely different experience than what I had uh, conjured in my head and what I had drawn from so many, many years ago. But it took me to identify what was it that was bothering me. And it was that fear of the, the unknown uh, of that area. Could I keep my daughter safe? Uh, what would happen if um, you know, the car broke down in a, in a neighborhood that wasn't very safe, that kind of stuff? And once I was able to identify that and tap through it, it m- made such a difference. And I'm grateful to say that we had a wonderful time, and that everything went well. The concert was great. We felt totally safe. And I'd I'd go down there again in a heartbeat. Mm. Same kind of scenario to actually examine what is it that, that's bothering you because it really is individual. It's not the same for everyone. And this kind of anxiety, it feels like it spills all over everything. The mind becomes extremely generalistic. Like when somebody may knock a cup of tea over at home and, and if they have that mindset, they'll say it's gone everywhere. You know, and you'd think it had gone literally all over the house and all over the room. Right, sure. When really it's contained to one area and it might have made a mess on that area and it might be on something that you really don't want to get stained. But when you look at it, it hasn't gone everywhere. It is where it is and it is what it is. So with anxiety, we get this generalistic, awful feeling that that it just leaches into everything. It just explodes into every area of our life. And that first step of saying, okay, I can get my kids to school. I can go to the shops. What is it that's stopping me feeling comfortable going further? To acknowledge what you can do and to really get detailed about what is the discomfort that you don't want to understandably face. But once you have that information, it gives you something to work on. And the next thing that really helps is to turn the thing on its head and ask yourself, why do I want to leave home? Can you find positive meaning in leaving home? Is there something you want to do? somewhere you want to go, someone you want to meet. Try listing three places you'd love to visit and note down why you would love to visit them. Maybe look at some pictures of people or places that you'd like to visit and focus on building the desire to leave home rather than facing the obstacles that anxiety is putting between you and where you want to go. There have been times in my life where due to chronic illness, it was very hard for me to leave my home and And I would sometimes find that to be a challenge. And other times I just throw my hands up and say, actually, I don't really need to go anywhere right now. (laughs) Maybe I should focus on something else rather than feeling the pressure that, you know, I should be going here or there. So, you know, ask that. Do you need to leave? Is there somewhere you need to go? Is there somewhere you want to go? And explore that. And then invite yourself to remain open to possibility. There, there can be various challenges with agoraphobia that respond best to one-on-one support. 
before you and I came together for this podcast, that was the, one of the first things that we said is that really one-on-one support is the best place to go when, when you're suffering with this. And our listener mentioned trying many different modalities without success. But what I'd like to say is don't give up. Keep exploring and trying because again, our mind likes to tell us that things aren't working out. That's the anxiety talking. So keep exploring, keep trying. Your anxiety may tell you nothing works and that you're stuck like this, but anxiety is not telling you the truth. And as we've mentioned many times over, EFT tapping can be a highly effective technique for agoraphobia and finding someone you can work with towards dissolving your anxiety and building your confidence is absolutely possible. In a one-on-one setting, very much like what Ananga offers, you can work with a professional to help you tap through this so you don't have to do it on your own. Yeah, EFT tapping is incredibly effective for any phobia. Find somebody that you feel comfortable with to explore the possibilities and don't give up. Keep trying. Also, keep in mind what you can do then build on it. Our listeners said that she can go to some local shops and get her kids to local programs. And that's really good. Those are two things that she can do. So note what you can do and acknowledge that you're doing that. It might not be easy for you, but you're doing it. It's, it's happening, and that's something to celebrate. Keep drawing your mind back to what you can do, and then building on that in small steps. Maybe visit a local park with your kids, or go for a short walk, or go to the new restaurant that you want to go to at a time where it might not be as busy as normal, those kinds of things. And one way to do this as well is to stand by your front door and use EFT tapping until you feel calm and then walk out the door and walk for five minutes away from home and then turn around and come back. Incremental forward motion. Yeah. The beautiful thing with EFT is once you've learned it, you can use it anywhere in those moments where you might feel like running back home and and the anxiety symptoms are kicking in and we might feel it's not safe to go further, then you can just stop where you are drop your shoulders, take some deep breaths, and tap through the EFT tapping sequence, saying, I don't feel safe to go on. And it will help you relax and slow the anxiety down, stop it from building. And then you might choose to pause and take stock of where you are and how you feel. And you might choose to, yes, I would rather go home. Or you might think, no, I can go a few steps further, or I'd like to challenge myself a little bit to go a little further. And that's usually the case. EFT tapping reduces anxiety and increases our resourcefulness in equal measure. Usually once the fear goes down, some ideas come up very quickly about how we can do things differently and how we can handle things more comfortably. It's definitely worth learning. We also like to bring forward that building internal strength and self-appreciation is an important part of what's happening as well. Look at what you have and what you can do every single day. People with agoraphobia often just want to feel safe. And like our listener who said, I just want to be me again. Here are some questions to sit with to get you back to feeling like yourself. How can you be you indoors? And what do you like to do that you can do just about anywhere? Also, how can you be more you without having anything to do with leaving your home. Anxiety will pull your mind to what you think you don't have or can't do. We invite you to counter it by doing what you can do and noting with awareness and gratitude what you have. Really important to when we talk about, I just want to be me again, we aren't defined by where we can go, where we can't go, what we can do, what we can't do. We're defined by our inner world, our inner landscape, and building that is very important for for all of us in all areas of life, but particularly in anxiety. It's very easy for us to feel defined by our limitations and to feel that we're not living a a normal life if we can't go here or do this or that. Really important to just build self-interest, curiosity in the things you can do without even leaving your chair. What might you explore? We've got the world at our fingertips these days. You could find an inspirational 
speaker, listen to a TEDx talk, follow a guided meditation, learn a craft, make some art, something that you can do wherever you are. You can always show yourself self-compassion, practice a breathing practice, and then just invest in what you think makes you you at a deeper level, not defined by where you can go or what you can do and build on that. In conclusion, three things that help when you're feeling agoraphobic are establishing a desire to go out, find inspiration, desire and meaning in moving beyond your current boundaries, build enthusiasm and possibility for going out, put pictures in a journal or on your fridge, somewhere where you can see them, something that gets you excited about moving on, and then learn skills to help you dissolve anxiety. Learn EFT tapping. EFT tapping can help you calm anxiety anywhere. You can use it to feel more comfortable before you leave home, to calm your specific fears and concerns, and to help you feel safe when you feel like running back home. We recently received a message from someone in our Facebook group who used tapping to overcome his fear of driving with great success. You can try tapping in our free Anxiety Slayer Starter course or our EFT course for anxiety, also in our one-on-one coaching sessions, where you can learn how to use tapping for your individual challenges with leaving home. Since there can be a number of personal challenges with agoraphobia, we find that people respond best with one-on-one support. Thank you so much for listening to Anxiety Slayer. We're grateful that you choose to listen in, and we'll see you again next week. To find out more about EFT tapping, tapping courses, and one-to-one tapping sessions with individual coaching, we invite you to visit our website at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT.